Folks, welcome back to AP Unfiltered. I got a little special one for you today. As we all know, I haven't been the biggest fan of Chris Cuomo in the past, but he went on a prolonged monologue regarding Israel and the hostages that needs to be heard by everybody. Maybe there's a little bit of a redemption arc here starting for him, but let's find out. I'm Aaron Prager, and this is AP Unfiltered. Folks, before we start the show, check out our amazing sponsor, PatriotCigarCompany.com. Great cigars, great business, run by an even better patron. Pick some up for yourself, for some loved ones, even buy a cigar for a deployed service member at a deep, deep, deep discount. But when you head to checkout, be sure you use promo code APU, like AP Unfiltered, for 25% off. And please, do me a favor. Hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, and the sub button if we're over on YouTube. Hit the like button. It's absolutely free to you. It means the world to me. And if you'd like to help support our channel monetarily and become a member over here on YouTube for $5 a month, the link is in the description of the video, on the video page, or on the main page of the channel. But let's get into it. I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure what to say. And that had me laboring all Labor Day weekend. How can it be hard to discuss why the murder of six Israeli and American hostages matters? Six young people stolen from the Nova Music Festival by Hamas on October 7th. Then, just as the IDF was close to rescuing them after almost a year of searching, they were reportedly executed. And now, Because Hamas would rather execute the hostages than let them be rescued. Let's be very clear about that. Now, I'm left with nothing but questions, but there are questions we all have to answer. The first one is, why don't these faces unify us, at least here at home? Carmel Gott. I mean, it's an American citizen. We talked about this in a previous video. There was an American citizen who was abducted, held for close to 365 days, and then on the approaching the rescue of said hostage, which is Hirsch Goldberg Poland, he's executed. An American citizen. Eden Yerushalmi, Alexander Lobanov, Almag Sarusi, Master Sergeant Ori Danino. Young people that could have been part of the solution lost to the problem. And there is one face we know more about, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, 23-year-old Israeli-American taken and now murdered, along with the others. His smiley punim has been the poster for the hostage crisis. I remember it when I first saw it all over his parents' house in Tel Aviv just after October 7th, when I was blown away by John and Rachel's love and commitment. Their hope and mine was that telling their story would help more connect to what is so wrong here, to what matters. Now I have to wonder, did I help anything at all? I wonder in part because of how this news has been received. First, why are all these lost souls merely called deaths? So many media accounts put it this way. Did they die in an accidental crash or from cancer in that tunnel? No, Hirsch and the others were assassinated. Targeted murders performed by terrorists to remind that they want no one saved from them. Hamas would rather execute the hostages, plain and simple. But setting that aside, why does the media report on this the way that they do? And that might seem like way too broad of a question, but time and time again, it is reported and it is shown on the screen, just like it was right there, Hostages found dead, as opposed to what really happened, which was hostages were murdered. Yet NBC, AP News, The Guardian, Reuters, and a bunch of these other media outlets change the words and downplay what actually happened. For the love of God, ladies and gentlemen, what are we talking about here? Let's be real about this. Truly innocent hostages, and one of them being an American, were murdered. Remember what happened when Noah Argamani and the other three were rescued by, by IDF soldiers at great cost? Do you remember how that was reported? The media ran it as the hostages were released. Think about that. They were not released. That is a blatant lie. And just ask yourself, why, do the media, why does the media do that? Why do they do that? A reaction was sent to me by a friend of Hirsch's family, and they asked some hard questions. Listen to this. Before he was murdered by Hamas in those final moments, was he aware of his parents' anguished pleas, quite possibly at the same moment, broadcasting at the Gaza border another chilling plea for him to just survive? 
Did you hear Hirsch's mother last Thursday? Hirsch! Hirsch! It's mama. I love you. Stay strong. Survive. Was he able to hear that? Was he able to hear the footsteps of the battle-hardened Israeli soldiers who were finally closing in after almost a year of trying to save him? You can feel how you want about the Middle East. It's one of the longest-running conflicts in history. It's going nowhere. But Hamas will never be remembered as freedom fighters in any context except one. For them to be free, to carry out Iran's extreme Islamist wishes. They want Gazans free? Yeah only to follow their caveman ways or die, and for Jews to die no matter what, and for us to die as well. And I wanna repeat that, ladies and gentlemen. Hamas wants Gazans to be free only in the sense so that they can follow their, as Chris Cuomo said, caveman ways or die. Now that's very important, folks. That is a big piece of logic missing from these pro-Hamas protesters here in the United States and the West for that matter. Hamas kills more innocent civilians, more Gazans, more Palestinians than Israel could ever, ever, ever hope to. And that takes place directly under the leadership of the evil terrorist Yahya Sinwar and his anti-entire Western word filth with the ultimate goal of Jews to die at all costs. Not to mention, and furthermore, the United States to die as well. Because remember what they call Israel. They call Israel the little evil and the United States the big evil. And keep this in mind as well, folks. If you align yourself with people who are okay, and it's their mode of operation to kidnap young people from a music festival and wish the destruction of the United States, well, then you're a fool. If you kidnap young people from a music festival, hold them as hostages, and then ultimately shoot them while also wishing the destruction of the United States, then you are a fool. These people in the United States who back these people are fools. Here at home, some on campus and online boost the cause of terrorists who would gladly kill them. And no, Hamas wouldn't just torture those who identify with oppressed minorities, such as LGBTQ+, but all of the same people who paint their symbols and repeat their propaganda. Hamas and the other proxies of the poison regime in Iran want us all dead, period. What else do you need to see? They celebrated the evil murder of a young woman by releasing a video of Eden spouting propaganda. Why? Because they want you to know that her value was only as an echo of their animus. And I'll add to here as well, the only reason that they made the video of her to be released, think about that. Right before they decided to murder her, they were like, hey, you know what? Her only value now is to try to push our propaganda to the rest of the Western world because so far, all of our nonsense that has been pushed out to everybody has been working. Look at what's happening in New York. Look what's happening in the United States as a whole. Look what's happening in London. Look what's happening in the UK as a whole. Look what's happening everywhere. That is what Hamas's mission is, is to make people feel sorry for them. That is what they want to do while they plot, plan things even worse than October 7th. And if you don't believe that, then you're lying to yourself. That is how they want her remembered. And too many here seem to agree. This idea that the real victims are elsewhere, in Gaza, and shame on us for giving all this attention to Hirsch and the others who had it coming. That idea has to be heard to be appreciated for its depravity. Listen to this anti-Israel protester in Manhattan caught on tape talking about Hirsch Goldberg. American was executed yesterday by terrorists. He Are you okay? It. He deserved it? Sure. Why is that? Why, what business does he have? Does what business have he at a music festival dancing with his friends? Israel yeah. Killed them. Not, Israel not, killed him? Not, and you're supporting terrorists like oh, yeah. that. You are this person is clearly sick, folks. And I'm so glad Chris Cuomo finally called them what they are. These are anti-Israel protesters. These are not pro-Palestinian protesters. They have never been. They protest against Israel and the people who live within its borders. And yes, the majority are Jews, the one Jewish state. And God forbid you go to a music festival as a young person, because if you do, then you deserve to be abducted, held for just shy of a year. And when your rescue force draws near to be shot in the head. 
The sentiment that's held by people here are indicative of a level of moral bankruptcy that we've rarely seen before. The mental gymnastics you have to go through to rationalize this is absolutely astounding and quite frightening. Oh, it's only one. It's not just one. It's representative of a kind. And we know where they're getting it. Look at this Twitter thread that I found. So I'm looking for what's missing. Where, where's the discussion about the hostages and why this happened? So the only discussion on the thread, hostage murders wasn't trending for its own importance. The theme was a headline that said, Israel did something bad. These are just nasty tweets. Get those off the screen. This was the headline in a discussion about the hostages being murdered. Where does this poisonous pursuit of parody end? Look, I get opposing the violence, the degree of death caused by Israel's retaliation, the occupation, the settlements, the lack of aid and media access. To want people in Gaza to be free and safe and determine their own fate. I'm here for all of it and present those arguments on the regular. But none of those desires will be met with Hamas terrorists in control. And no state would do much differently than Israel is right now if they shared a border with an organization pledged to their destruction. What I do not get is people saying, who cares about six versus 40,000 Gazans? This relativism, again, is poison. All six were stolen, were innocent. You can't say that about all in Gaza. And the bigger problem is that but for these six and the others who were stolen as part of one of the worst massacres in Israeli history, you don't have the 40,000. Yes, there was trouble before October 7. Yes, that trouble has a degree of Israeli culpability. But this current violence is the consequence of one day and the actions of one group. You see, there is a difference here. Some, even including myself, understand that innocent lives being taken matter. Okay? A matter. And the other side does it. Truly innocent Palestinians, my heart absolutely breaks for them. The left and these protesters here in the West could give a bloody damn about truly innocent Israelis being killed. Now, I will say this, and I stand by this. And in fact, I've been saying this since the beginning. Those truly innocent Palestinian lives are to be laid at the feet of Hamas because just as Chris said here, this violence, this iteration was kicked off and initiated by the events of October 7th, full stop. Anybody who is trying to tell you otherwise is willfully lying to you. And historically, we didn't blame Britain for the Germans who were killed in Nazi Germany. We didn't blame the U.S. for the Japanese during, uh, killed during the, the Japanese Empire in World War II. We've lost the understanding, folks, that true evil exists, it seems. And when good stands up to that evil in war, it is, in fact, hell. There's no way around it. But the absolute degree of moral relativism on display by these Hamas supporters in the West is a whole separate level. If Hamas truly wanted peace and a deal, they would not have killed the hostages right before they were going to be rescued. They would not have done that. You have to confront these facts. And for the Israelis, these murders made deeper the festering wound opened on that day. I get protests of Netanyahu and those arguing he could have taken a deal that was rumored to potentially bring hostages home. Whether or not it was the right deal, these murders are an indictment of Bibi's decisions and desires. Yes, these murders rightly motivate the outrage there that Bibi and his far-right regime are feeding off this war to maintain power and do not reflect the Israeli people's appetite for this to end. But be clear, we are not a new prime minister in Israel away from peace. Are we? Certainly not now. And I have to interject here really quick, folks. I may not agree with everything Chris just said there, but I think that and as a whole, we can all agree that a regime change in Israel will not change this, especially now. In fact, nothing will change this as long as Hamas, the Hamas group and organization, lives and operates directly in Israel's backyard with the help and assistance of global funding. The group who has taken all the aid given to them and built a network of tunnels with it that rivals the London underground. Some, some claim that it's bigger. I wouldn't be surprised how there are billionaires with their, the billionaire heads of Hamas who live in these areas where their children are treated like princes. All of these things, the global funding that goes into Hamas and into, that fl flows into Gaza is stolen by Hamas and then on the back end of it used to then kill more Israelis. Keep this in mind, too. Hamas is a group that has vowed the destruction of the state of Israel. That does not take a rocket scientist to figure out. Yes, 
BB Netanyahu will have some big time explaining and answering to do when this is over. I'm not denying that for a second, but for the time being, this is not going to change by just saying, hey, you know what, BB, you're out. Okay, let's get in the last clip and I'll wrap up with my thoughts afterwards, folks. Here is what seems horrible, but true. I don't believe there is any amount of suffering, any amount of death that would be enough to say enough. And the reason for that is now clear to me. Nothing can get better while we have a selective preference about who it's okay to kill. While we have different rationales for right and wrong, depending on who dies. As long as some deaths move us in a way others don't, there will be nothing approaching peace there or here, by the way. Either it all matters or none of it matters. Either we all matter to one another or no one matters to anyone. The dead in Gaza matter. The six being murdered matter. Move to what we do to stop it rather than compare killings. And the reality hit me when Hirsch's father said what he said at Hirsch's funeral. We failed you, Hirsch. I had an instant rejection to that idea. He was wrong. John, I love you. You are wrong about you and your family. You have only succeeded, brother, in raising a beautiful kid who had the right things in his head and in his heart by you and Rachel being a lodestar for putting pain to a greater purpose to show us we lost our grip on our collective respect for humanity. You are wrong about you, but you are right about many of us. We must make these murders matter. There is relatively way too much quiet about what happened. Let this be the catalyst that drives leaders to demand Hamas give the hostages back, American and others, and then you stop the fighting. No leader should be silent now. And we don't need to hear condolences and clawing nods to peace. What are they going to do to make it stop? Or do you just want to wait for it to be all the Americans are dead? Now, I might not agree with everything that Chris said in this segment, but he did have a lot of good points. And like I said at the beginning, maybe he's having a bit of a moral redemption arc. And I, you know how I, you know, my philosophy is on that. Everybody needs to be able to be allowed a redemption arc. You know, granted, unless you're truly evil, which, you know, I'm not going to offer Hamas a redemption arc for that matter. But yes. He does hit on a good point. There cannot be a ceasefire until the hostages are returned. The idea that Israel should agree to a ceasefire while Israel still have their people in the control of Hamas, a group, by the way, who have now demonstrated that they will execute them before being faced with the prospect of letting them be rescued is a purely insane proposition. I'm here to talk about it. If you'd like, drop a comment down below. It's simple. Give back the hostages, then let's talk. But until then, more people will die. And more people will have fractured families. So the ball, as it has been for a while now, is fully in the court of Hamas and Yahya Sinwar and the leadership. And even those words coming out of my mouth, by the way, make me sick. But that's where we're at right now, folks. That's where we are. Listen, folks, all I got for you today. If you appreciate this type of content and you want to see more like it and more videos like this and to help us to enable to do this, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button for over on YouTube. Make sure the bell is rung so you don't miss any notifications. It's absolutely free to do that. And if you would like to help contribute to our efforts and help us keep the lights on, continue to push these messages, become a member for $5 a month over on YouTube. Link is in the description of the video to do so, or you can hit on the main page or on the page of the video. I appreciate you guys being here. Staying informed is an American and moral obligation. And until next time, catch you on the next one.